Dajiahao. Welcome to our Mandarin Lunch and Learn on December 18th. 欢迎大家来参加我们的午间中文, a read aloud series covers Chinese language, literature, art, history, and many other cultural elements, one poem at a time. My name is Shen Zhan Liao, head of the School of Chinese Studies at China Institute. I'm here with my colleague Zhi Ren or Michael from our Confucius Institute. Hello, everyone. I'm Zhi Ren. So today is our last session for the year 2020. Uh, I will jump right into our topic today. First, we will read a selected poem by Bai Juyi, Song of the Lute, about a very specific music instrument, pipa. And then I'm very excited that we have a guest musician, Miss Zhou Yi, with us um, to talk more about pipa and her mastery performance. And the third part, if we do have time, we will have a breakout session to divide the group into beginner and intermediate um, to practice more later. So before we start today's session, I just want also to thank everyone. Uh, we started the session since April, and now it's December. For all these months, thank you for joining us. And we do have our holiday party next week, December 22nd. Uh, I would encourage you to join us, but it's your turn to select a poem and a read aloud together. So let me go to the next slide. Today we are reading Pi Pa Xing. Pi Pa Xing by Bai Ju. Yi, Bai Ju Yi. The translation is by Burton Watson. Some of you may remember we learned his translation of Wang Wei's Deer Fence, Lu Zhai. If you are not familiar with Pi Pa, you shall keep in mind that Pi Pa is not exactly the same as the Western sense of lute but it is part of the lute family, and we will talk about it a little bit more later. The reason we chose Pi Pa Xing today, um, one is it's a rather famous, well-known poem at the student of Chinese language and classical Chinese literature. This poem is a must study, like every poem we have introduced in this series. The other reason is it's the holiday season and I feel perhaps a, um, a music session uh, will add a little bit of the holiday festivity. And of course, Chinese poems are often insepar inseparable from music. Many of them are lyrics for songs, only that the music has been lost. We don't know if it's the case for Pi Pa Xing, but the title is quite revealing regarding the connection between music and poetry. It is fair to say the poet Bai Juyi had a relatively smooth political career compared to all the other three poets we introduced this fall. Du Mu never really had a political career Su Shi had his ups and downs, mostly downs, but it didn't prevent him becoming a, a poet, a great poet and artist, especially in calligraphy. And a foodie, as well, some of us may remember. And Tao Yuanming ultimately retreated from political career altogether. So if we notice Bai Ju Yi's time, he lived through 772 to 846. And it's after 755 that a rebellion in Tang Dynasty gravely weakened 
the dynasty's power. So the time Bai Zhiyi lived is called Zhong Tang, Mid Tang time. Nevertheless, Tang Dynasty is still considered to be the time when China was most eager and often to uh, and, and open to experience foreign cultures. This relatively unattractive map from Columbia University educational site, Asia, Asia for Educators, shows the Silk Roads during the Tang Dynasty. So we can see the circles here is where China was during Tang Dynasty. Chang'an was the capital of the empire. And then these are the major towns and the civilizations along the Silk Road that were rising. So on the west, it's the, Bi the Byzantine Empire. And in the middle, it's the rising and the newly Isla Islamic um, Middle East. The Indian Empire were also rising and then contemporarily with the Tang Dynasty. So trading, as we can see, between the East and the West have been long established while the Silk Road started as we know it um, during the Han Dynasty from 200 BC to 200 AD, roughly speaking, if not earlier. So we can see that in Tang Dynasty, while well, not only in trading, but also cultures along with the trading have been thriving and exchanged between the different cities and different civilizations. As we can imagine, along with the trade, cultures were exchanged as well. And music was a big part of it. It's still a big part of it, even in today's world. Pipa, just briefly, originally, one theory originally is coming from Central Asia, from a instrument, this is um, Barbet, roughly around 1 BC. Apparently it became very popular during Bai Zhuyi's time, as it appears in this long ballad or the song of the lute. This picture also from Tang Dynasty now is actually, um, it, 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 what we can see, pipa is being played in one of the musicians in the figurines. It is on display at the Met in New York right now. So the song or the poem we are reading is in fact a long ballad. We have learned regulated poems that has eight lines or shorter poems like a quatrain with only four lines. A ballad is based on earlier forms and not following the strict rules as the regulated form, lu shi or the quatrain, jue ju. So today, because of the time limits, we're going to read just a small part of uh, Pi Pa Xing. But I want to show you the entire poem. Uh, this is from a website that actually has a collection of the translation of many Chinese classics. Uh, it's a good website. Uh, we can include that. Uh, I, I would ask Zhizhen, please um, put the link into the chat box. If anyone is interested, well, you can look into this website. So this Pi Pa Xin in Chinese, uh, it has a preface. And then the actual poem started from this line. Xunyang Jiang Kou Ye Song Ke. So the good part of this website is also each character in traditional Chinese form has the, if you put your mouse on it, um, it has the pinyin, the English literal translation, and later you, you have the whole translation of the poem. So starting the, 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 
the poem started from this line all the way to the end. So we can see how long the poem is. This is the end of the line. So in this, in this, on this website, you are reading it from how to say it, left to right, from right to left and vertically, as in the uh, classical Chinese text um, format. And the Chinese, uh, the English translation of the poem is also underneath the Chinese version. Okay, coming back to our reading. And I will start uh, just for the selected part, only in 10 lines. But this is the part that is very descriptive about the techniques and uh, the expressions of the uh, instrument, pipa. This is the most well-known a poetic description of how pipa is played and also how expressive the instrument is in terms of um, indicating the feelings and um, striking emotions. So I will read the first time the entire selected part and we will read together line by line. Da xian, cao cao, ru ji yu. 小贤窃窃如思语凝觉不通声赞歇此时无声胜有声。All right, now it's our turn together. Um, I will read each character and pause and then the entire line and pause. So you can read from your uh, screen. I will not be able to hear you, but you can hear me and try to um, make sure the pronunciation is accurate as possible. All right, here we go. Da, xian, cao, cao, Ru Ji Yu Da Xian Cao Cao Ru Ji Yu Xiao Xian Chie Chao Chie Chie Tuo Za Tan Cao Cao Chie Chie Tuo Za Tan Da Ju Xiao Ju Luo Yu Pan Da Ju Xiao Ju Luo Yu Pan Q 
见，观，音，语，花，底，华。见观英语，花底华，幽夜泉流冰下。南，幽夜泉流，冰下南，冰泉冷色。咸、凝、绝，冰泉冷色，咸凝绝，凝、绝。不，通，声，赞，歇，凝绝不通，声赞歇。有忧愁暗恨生，别有忧愁暗恨生。子，十，五，生。Apologies, this should have a first tone on top of this. 生，圣，有，生。此时无声，胜有声。So this is the last line of the selected part for today's read aloud. Uh, this line, in fact, 此时无声，胜有声 is still widely used as to describe a situation when silence is worth of a thousand words. A tribute to Bai Junyi's reputation as a poem in Tang Dai, as a poet in Tang Dynasty, who writes for common people instead of only for the educated elites. So, perhaps well after each line, let's read this together from the title, and I will pause after each line. 琵琶行，大弦嘈嘈如急雨，小弦切切如私语，嘈嘈切切错杂谈，大珠小珠落玉盘。见观英语
花比华。幽夜泉流冰下难，冰泉冷色闲凝绝，凝绝不通声暂歇。别有忧愁暗恨生，此时无声胜有声。All right, now I will stop sharing, and with my great pleasure, I will introduce、um, my guest musician, also an instructor of pipa at China Institute. We in fact offer pipa classes through our、um, program, and Miss Zhou Yi, also a good friend and my guqin teacher as well. So, ah,、uh, hi, Miss Jo, 你好 Hi, Liao 老师 Um, thanks for inviting me to be, ah,、uh, your program, and you already introduced, ah,、uh, what the Pipa is from Long Tang Dynasty. So, um, I want to say something, um, because um, in the Tang Dynasty, Pipa is deep related to all、uh, the classical Chinese literature, all the Chinese poem. Uh, classical Chinese poem and also Chinese song. They,、uh, there's a lot of、uh, literature about pipa.、Um, for the sound of the lute,、um, you can see it's a very long lu shi,、uh, and also、um, they have a lot of words, a lot of、uh, adjective to describe the pipa will look like, and also how the sound like. But today I want to explain it. Explain the sentence one by one.、Uh, maybe you will have some some like a sense of how it really sounds, like a physical sound, like it. Right? Let me share my screen. All right. So I just use、uh, the parts you taught them. 大弦嘈嘈如急雨 ，the big string plan plan like swift follow rings. So the big string that means the lower string from pipa. Yeah, so it's a lower string, the thicker the string. So when you play, sounds like a rain falling on the roof. 小弦切切如私语。The little string when the buzz buzz like secret conversations. The little string, which is mean the fine string, the thinnest string, the highest string from pipa. So when play this, it produces a very delicate sound. 嘈嘈切切错杂谈 Plan plan buzz buzz mix and mingle in her play. That means the pipa player. Uh, switched between different kinds, sign different strings from the highest to the lowest.、Um, Da zhu, xiao zhu, luo yu pan, like big pearl and a little pearls falling on the jade plate. Yeah, because the pipa is a plucking string instrument. Uh, so all the single pluck make a single staccato, kind of like uh. A pearl,、uh, like a pearl falling on the jade plate. Alright, so the first four sentences about it's all about the timbre, the sound from the pipa. Then from the fifth one, um, the poet. Trying to describe the the sound effect the pipa plate used, 见观音语花底华 or the soft call of warbler voice resonating under the blossom. It's a special technique from pipa sliding. The hidden sudden of springs and the real belly moving beneath the ice. So that means the tremolo sound getting slower and slower. It's like a ritardando. Now the music has a tempo change. Bing 
泉冷涩咸凝绝。Then the ice springs, uh, congealed with cold. The string seems to uh freeze. So it's again finally ricardando and has a short pause between the music. Ningjue bu tong shen jian xie. So it's again. Now something different, hidden anguish, dark approaching stalking form. So, so here, the music totally stopped. 此时无声胜有声 And at such times, the silence was finer than any sound. Let the silence speak. So, in Chinese music philosophy, sometimes the rest is part of the music. Empty. Let the silence speaks. So the the um the part uh Liao Lao Shi, uh select it's including all these pipa techniques, and what are these techniques sound like, and what's what they meaning. So you have to empty spot, and also I'd like to mention some other um sentences phrases from the poetry. So that one actually, these four sentences from the beginning of the poem, 千呼万唤始出来 a sudden please and a thousand chords, and at last she appears. So this is kind of um, it's the performing performance gesture. So for the pipa player, when I first took my pipa lessons, um, my pipa teacher said, so when you hold a pipa, you cannot show your whole face. This is why you have. Hide your face behind the pipa. So this is second. 犹抱琵琶半遮面 But even then, she held the lute, so it have hit her face. So this is the way you hold the pipa when you enter into the stage or entering to perform to、uh, in front of the audience. 转轴拨弦三两声 She tuned the pegs, brushed the strings. Soothing two of three notes. So that's a tuning, and also tuning is a very Uh, important part of Chinese musical play, because we said、um, tune your heart before tune your instrument. So through the tuning, you can let yourself calm down and you can concentrate to your music. 未成曲调先有情 Before they had formed the melody, already the feeling came through. So if you want to tell the player is good or not. Listen to her, her, or listen to his tuning. If you, she tuned like calmly and very peaceful. That means、um, she or he is a good musician because、um, there's no other thing she could come to her the player's mind. The player can concentrate to the music. And the second section, 轻拢慢捻，抹复调 Lightly she pressed the strings, slowly plucked. Pulled and snapped them. So this is is another kind of um pipa technique, and these sentences are very particular. Qing long, slightly she pressed. That's about the left hand technique. So you push the string in, or you pull back the string to raise the pitch. 慢捻 so slowly plucked. That's also about the left hand techniques. It's different kind of vibrato. It's kind of like you are moving forward and backward the 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 strings. It's like rolling a rope between your fingers. And the next three character more 复调 That's about the right hand techniques. For example, if the thumb go in. Use this side. Let's make a sound. That is called mo. Tiao means the thumb plucking. Use the thumb. 
and 初围霓裳后六幺 first performing rainbow skirts, then waist of green. Uh, now 白居易 he mentioned about two famous pipa um solo pieces from Tang Dynasty, rainbow skirt. Uh, that one it was a court music from Tang Dynasty. Uh, usually the music always combined to perform or、uh, with the dancer or sometimes sing involved. And waste of grain. That one also is a very important music from、um, Tang Dynasty.、Um, unfortunately, now this Tang Dynasty music、um, is no longer exist anymore. We have the notation the score, but nobody knows、uh, how the sound will like. Next one, Ying Ping Jia Po, Shui Jiang Ben. Then a silver waist was. Abruptly break water came splashing splashing force. So this also the next section is talk about another famous pipa piece that's called ambushing from ten sides. Remember before she said、uh, the the point she said the music stopped past. Then. So suddenly, the music like or, or strumming involved sounds like a break or、um, a, a vase would abruptly break. 铁骑突出刀枪鸣 on the famous pipa repertoire, ambushing from ten、uh, sides. That's a music about a historical battle that、like, happened two thousand years ago, 楚汉征 So this is why pipa use a variety of technique to emit the sound from the ancient battle. It's like swords. And the horse, horse running, and also people screaming. And the last two sentences, 曲终收播当心画 As the piece ended, she swiped the plectrum in an arc before her breast. So this is the old way how to finish the music. Usually the last. A plug is a big one. Then you just stop the string. It's also a technique. And 四弦一声如裂帛 and all four strings made a single sound, like the sound of rending silk. It's like sound. Yeah, because the Tang Dynasty pipa, the strings they were made of silk. So when you do a quick strumming, sounds like you rip off a silk. So this is all about um, uh, um, the sound of the lute, and、uh, Bai Juyi used a very good word to deeply describe、uh, the pipa, the sound, and how like what kind of music pipa、um, played, and also how do they sound like. And the other thing I'd like to mention about is the Tang Dynasty pipa is a little bit different from the modern pipa. See, uh, they these two, uh, they were two typical Tang Dynasty pipa. From the left side, that's a Tang Dynasty five-stringed pipa. It's a straight head. And but Bai Ju is in Bai Ju is poem.、Uh, he was talking about Tang Dynasty four-string pipa, which is a banded head pipa. And as you can see, there's a four silk strings. Like when you, when she finished playing, just strum the four string. And I have another pipa. That one is、um, very similar to the Tang Dynasty four string pipa. You can see the head is different from the modern pipa. This is a modern pipa, straight head, and this is a Tang Dynasty pipa,、um, banded neck, and four strings, and it sounds different too. And this one. Player don't use their own finger to pluck. We use a special plectrum. Usually, plectrum is made of ivory or like a horn,、uh, um, buffalo horn. So it's much. Alright. Alright. Now,、um, remember before we just mentioned a piece in this. In this、um, poem, 
First, perform rainbow skirts, then waist of gray. Now I'm going to play. Um, I'm de demonstrate a piece that's a uh, modern rework from the Tang Dynasty music. The name of the piece I'm going to play is called the Waste of Gray. Please enjoy.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Joey Laoshi. Thank you. Thank you. I can see so many wonderful comments coming in. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So I hope um, all this piece and the technique help you to understand more about the poem and also all the demonstrates the techniques, what the sound like. Thank you for having me.